Tomorrow belongs to those who start today with AMP. We are heading for mass extinction. There you go, that's it, end it there. As humans destroy our own habitat. That is the no holes barred message from climate change expert Guy McPherson from the University of Arizona. Some label him an eco-terrorist. Others say he's an anarchist. But could he just be a realist? Guy's in New Zealand on a speaking tour and joins me now. Guy, great to see you again. Likewise, Paul. Last time I spoke to you, um, 2014, and you sort of, you know, snatched any hope of a future from me and my family. Um, <laughs> Um, it was it was doom and gloom. Has anything changed since then in your in your account of things? Oh yes, the situation is far worse than it was then. Okay, okay, okay. Um, so essentially, to paraphrase, we're just all wasting our time even talking about climate change and global warming and sea rising. Well, I, I'd appreciate the opportunity for people to know what's going on in the world. That's why I do what I do. And so I don't think we, we need to not talk about it. Uh, I think we need to let people know that what is underway is but almost... But it's futile. Well, action is is futile except with respect to our personal selves and how we feel about ourselves. Yes, action is the antidote to despair, said Edward Abbey, the desert mm. anarchist. Mm. Are you an anarchist? I am. And I know what that means. Mm. It's not chaos. Anarchism is not a not a romantic notion, but an, an idea, a, a way of living that is has been proven successful for three million years of the human experience. If you're right, then you are also surely wrong. I mean, you say that it's important that we talk about it so that we know what's going on, but I don't think that's why we talk about it. If you're right, the reason we talk about it is in an attempt essentially to fool ourselves into thinking that we can actually stave it off. Well... It depends on your perspective. Again, uh, my perspective is that there is nothing to be done in terms of preserving the human species more than a few more years. Um, other people think that actions will um, increase their own longevity, which might be true depending upon what they do and where they move to. Um, but I, th I think in terms of the human race, we're done. It's locked in. It's been locked in for a long time. We're in the midst of the sixth mass extinction. Okay, we'll talk about your time frame in a moment because I guess that, it, and that, uh, you've already indicated that's something that does change because things have got worse rapidly, more rapidly than perhaps you originally thought. You almost imply in some of your writing that we have the arrogance to believe that the future of the planet and the future of humankind is the same thing. In reality, you hold quite a positive outlook for the future of the planet, just not with us on it. Absolutely, yes. I mean, we've had humans on the planet, our species, for about 200,000 years. The universe is 13.8 billion years old. We're, a we're just a moment. Spectrum. We're a moment in time. We really are. I mean, it's a geological blink, and, and it looks like we're beyond geological at this point and, and into the real blink. With humans gone, and presumably not only humans, but other life as we know it, as we know it, will the planet actually heal itself, given enough millennia? It will, it will take millions of years, as it has following previous mass extinction events. But, but I've no doubt there will be a thriving planet again. It's just for a few million years, there will be very small things like microbes and bacteria and fungi. As I look at you now, and I mean, what you say seems logical, much more logical than those who, who say we can stand in the way of this. We can shout at the tide not to come in. Um, but I, I really don't believe it because part of me, of course, being a human being, being an illogical creature, um, thinks I can't imagine that none of this will exist. And so I will pretend that it doesn't exist. Is that what you fight when you go around, when you, when you, when you lecture people around the world? Of, of course. And mostly it's people who look a lot like you and me, people who are pretty privileged and can't imagine this amount of privilege going away. And so that's the difficulty. This is all we've ever known. We were born into this. Mm. I call it born into captivity. Mm. And we didn't have any choice about the matter, right? We didn't vote on whether we got to show up at this point in history. So it's difficult to imagine anything different than this much less the, the kind of uh, situation that is certain to arise in the not-too-distant future. Right. It's, the other thing that it's hard to imagine, even though we have absolute proof of it all, all around us, is that we are but a moment in time because we know history. We know that we will not last forever. Right. So we potentially know some of the future. How much time do we have? How much time does the human race have? I can't imagine there will be a human on the planet in 10 years. 
Um, I, I suspect it'll be... No, close. I'm sorry. <laughs> Did you say 10 years? <laughs> yes. Yes. In my out loud voice, even. Yes. I can't... You know, we're headed for a temperature within that span that is at or near the highest temperature experienced on Earth in the last 2 billion years. That's at least an order of magnitude faster than occurred during the Great Dying 252 but, million but years. But you are suggesting then that the temperature increase will be phenomenal over the next few years. Oh, yes. Yeah, this is exponential change, and we have difficulty coming to grips with exponential change. Because, no, no, I understand the, the, yeah. the, the, the term exponential, and I understand the term change. What I, what I don't want to understand is, is your time frame. Sure. I mean, it, why are you even I, wasting time here in the studio? Why the hell are we all here? I, if it's only, seriously, if it's only 10 years, what the hell are you doing here? You're dragging your wife around the bloody world <laughs> talking about this. You've only got 10 years. Shouldn't you be at home with your kids? Uh, I, I, I don't have kids because uh, I could see this oh, sort of thing of coming a long time ago. <laughs> Stab me in the heart now. <laughs> Seriously, 10 years? No, we, we don't have 10 years. You know, and, and the problem is when I give a number like that, people think it's going to be business as usual until your nine years. Your wife is in the of the studio taking a photo. What the hell are you taking photographs for? Uh, you're, actually, not, you're never going to look at those photos back. <laughs> actually, that's not my wife. That's my partner. But it's a minor issue. Oh, it, look, in the great scheme of things, that is just of no interest at all. Okay, so... so oh, I, I encourage people to pursue excellence, to pursue love, to pursue what they love to do. I don't think these are, are crazy ideas, actually. And, and I also encourage people to remain calm because nothing is under control, certainly not under our control. You wouldn't imagine, though, that things are going to get better. They could only get worse. So presumably in terms of your time frame... It, Given that I can't remember what you said to me two years ago, how I let it slip my mind, I don't know. But it was certainly a much greater time frame than ten years. Oh yes. So, so yes, that's your maximum time frame. For, do you worry that you know up until now I was prepared to go with you, but now you've snatched all hope of a future from me and my darling children? That's my daughter over there, Bella. She hasn't had an opportunity. She hasn't had a fair crack of the whip. I, I know, and I feel horrible about that. I really do. The, the young young people on the planet have not had an opportunity to live full lives, to even come to grips. Oh, with what it means to live. The, don't even finish the sentence. We haven't got time. Um, so uh, I just wonder, either I should stop talking to you now and never talk to you again, or I may as well continue talking to you because there's no point talking to anyone else. Do you know what I mean? Uh, I absolutely know what you mean. Yes. How do you uh, then... So, if and you're, you're right. There's no point in talking to anybody else, Paul. It's just me and you. If Okay, so just here's the thing, Guy. God. If people believe you, and virtually no one will especially now you've thrown the time frame in. If they do believe you, how will you prevent a state of absolute hopelessness creeping in around the globe? I think hope is a horrible idea. Hope is wishful thinking. Hope, uh, let me quote Nietzsche on this one. Hope in reality is the worst of evils, for it extends the torments of man. Hope and fear are the twin sides of the, I don't know the future coin, but I, I think it's really good or I think it's really horrible, but I'm not going to take any action either way. Hope is a bad idea. Let's abandon that and get on with reality instead. Let's get on with living instead of wishing for the future that never comes. I'm glad I'm not in the business of autonomous cars because I was pretty convinced they were going to change our lives for the better within the next 10 years. <laughs> More fool them. <laughs> um, okay, well, thanks for that, Guy. Um, just... <laughs> you know, I've got no. I've got my executive producer in my ear saying we've got to move on. We don't have to do anything, Sarah. Quite frankly, with this information, we don't have to do anything. Um, and that whole broadcasting standards guideline book, <laughs> forget that bloody thing. Um, okay, so guy, just in terms of because obviously this is what this is what I need to know. Bella needs to know it as well. Um, best guess for the future of humanity is how many years? Oh, I'm not going to go there. I, I encourage people to live fully in the time we have left to be fully present with the ones we're with, including the rest of the living planet. But I don't know your expiration date. Hmm. Okay, Guy. Um, take care. <laughs> Why? Um, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you, Paul. Okay. I appreciate now, by the way, just quickly, I can't, because this is just this has come like a bolt out of the blue from me. I should have known this. It should have been on the card 10 years. Um, what, no, no, no. What we do you make we don't, of we don't all have the other years. experts? Because you're an expert. What do you make of all the other experts that do seem to think 
we can affect change. We can survive. They are experts as well, or claim to be. Right, right. And, and well, for one thing, they're paid. And, and so they only go halfway in presenting the information. Almost nobody is willing to add up the feedbacks that we've triggered and, yeah. and the consequences of them. So because we're a society that is focused on specialization, the specialists are geared towards understanding one aspect or, or, or another aspect of mm. climate change. Mm. Things like global dimming or the melting of the Arctic ice and the albedo associated with that or the methane. Nobody's putting all those mm. things So in a together. nutshell, they, they, they're lying, essentially. They're fooling themselves and everybody else. Uh, I, I would hate to use the word lying. I think it's far worse than that. <laughs> Guy, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, that is Guy McPherson, uh, Emeritus Professor of Natural Resources and Evolutionary Bio Biology from the um, University of Arizona.